Hello everyone, God bless you. You are welcome to Prophetic Intercession with Amel. Always an honor for me to bring you prophetic messages from the Lord. You can see me, I'm all smiles because I've got a good word. I've got a good word and it's leaving me with all smiles. I'm grateful to God that one of the things that always makes my heart bitter, one of the things that makes me feel so sad is when I see the wicked triumph. Is when I see the wicked seem like they are succeeding anyways. When I see the wicked plan and they are able to execute their plan, it hurts me so much. It hurts me so much. But this time around, that's not a case. Because someone, there is someone who really hates you. There is someone out there who hates you. Either because you rejected them or because they heard something about you they did not like. And so they really hate you. But God says it will not matter very soon. It will not matter very soon. They would not have any choice. But to want to be in your book, good books, they will not have any choice but to want to be on your side. This prophetic word is a continuation of the previous prophetic word. When I finished with that, God began to minister this to me. You know, God uses every situation to minister to us. He uses scriptures, he uses events, he uses people, he uses different scenarios to be able to minister and pass certain messages across. God says this person hates you, but it doesn't matter because very soon you will be in a position where they have no choice but to want to be in your good books. Now, how is it a continuation from the previous prophetic word? We're talking about Daniel, uh, we're talking about um, Joseph, Potiphar's wife, and Potiphar himself because Potiphar was the one that threw Joseph into prison. Now, you can imagine the energy that is around Potiphar and his wife. The wife felt hurt because, you know, her ego was bruised. She's a beautiful woman of a rich man who wanted a young slave, a young servant, and yet the servant rejected her. So she's pained by the fact that the servant rejected her. She, I, I, I bet she hates Joseph because she turned her down because he turned her down and she just wanted to see him suffer because she turned her down and Potiphar on the other side hates Joseph so much because he was made to believe that Joseph tried to, to sleep with his wife it wasn't funny to him and so he was really bitter about Joseph, hated him. I'm not even sure he requested to even hear Joseph's side of the story. When the wife said it and showed an evidence, he just, you know, um, all he wanted to do was seek justice or vengeance or just make Joseph suffer and pay for it. I guess when Joseph was in prison, it was a relief to them. It was a relief, relief to him and the wife of Potiphar should be happy saying in her heart, Joseph got what he deserved for rejecting me. How dare he ever try to reject me? And fast forward a few years later, after Joseph has been in prison and interprets the dream of the Pharaoh and is now made the prime minister. You know, when Potiphar was a rich man and a very influential person, that is why Joseph was even kept in the prison of where, um, I don't know about your country, but in my country, politicians do not go to the same cell as a commoner. They have their own place. It might be in the same place, it might be in the same structure, but they have different rooms where they keep top people. And one of the reasons... Um, um, Joseph was able to be in the same place where the baker and the cup bearer were is because these were people who served the king. So they were not ordinary men. And Joseph serving Potiphar 
and being placed in that prison meant that Potiphar was a high-ranked man in the system of Egypt was a high ranked man. So even people that defiled, people that went against him did not go to a commoner's prison or to a commoner's cell. They would go to where influential recalcitrant people are. And while they are in prison, you know, the people who sent you can still decide to make your life really, really um, miserable. So maybe... They, they try to pull on certain stones, you know, they try to pull certain stones while he was in prison to make his life almost impossible. They hated him and they would do everything to make him really suffer. But now, when God lifted him, when God made him prime minister, their hate was of no effect. What they, they thought of him did not really matter. What they wanted badly, they wanted to see him suffer. It did not really matter because God had elevated him. And God is speaking to someone. He says, there a particular category of people do not like you. There are some people who hate you so much and their desire is to see you suffer. Their desire is to see you in pain. Their desire is to have you beg. But he says very soon it will not matter because it's about to lift you above a position where they have a say in your life. He's about to elevate you to a position where what they think about you does not matter. He's about to raise you to a place where what they think about you is of known effect. They hate you, but it will not matter because God is raising you to a point where their decisions or where their 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 interests or where how they feel about you will not have any effect do you know what hurts the most in this story for for Potiphar and his wife is that Joseph became more valuable in the land of Egypt than them he was prime minister second to command second in command next to the Potiphar himself what um, Potiphar and his wife would have never imagined. And so God is speaking to someone. They might not like you. They might hate your gods. They might hate the very ground you're walking on. But he's about to elevate you to a point where their hate will not have any effect on you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Have you ever imagined where you are at the mercy of those who hate you? Have you ever imagined a situation where you are at the mercy of those who do not like you or think well of you? Believe me, it's not a good place to be. But the beautiful thing here is that they hate you, but God himself is elevating you to a point where their hate will not have any effect on your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you. Those who hate you and want to see you suffer, I pray may God elevate you above them in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who do not like you, those who do not like you for any just cause or those who have teamed up against you to make you suffer, I pray that God in his sovereignty is going to elevate you to a place where their hate of you will have no effect in your life in Jesus mighty name hallelujah glory to God thank you Jesus for this elevation thank you Lord for lifting us up even in the midst of our enemies in the mighty name of Jesus now may the Lord bless you, keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you.